So now basically we will try to learn how uh, these activity within Android is unfolding. In other words, the basic activity life cycle of an Android app, how it is working, how it unfolds and when each of these activity events are being performed. If you're here for the first time, please don't forget to visit my page and subscribe to the channel. You will find that on my channel, there are more than 500 video lectures based on PHP, Mel scripting, Maya, Maya embedded language, uh, 3D graphics from developing HTML, CSS, JavaScript to working on Android, Photoshop, multimedia technology and so on and so forth. So these tutorials will be very helpful and very productive for you. So don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon and receive notifications regularly. Remember, typically we have four main activities within our Android. We say we have something called on start or a running activity. Um, okay, running activity. We say that running activity indicates that your app is running. We have a paused activity that indicates your app, app is at a paused state. We have something called a stopped state, which means your activity has been stopped. It is no longer running, but it might still be in the background. And finally, destroyed activity, which basically means that your app is paused, stopped, and now removed from memory. And even in the background, it is not being run. Okay. So these are four primary main activities. S what we call running, paused, stopped, and destroyed. Okay. Within these four activities, then we have few more stages as explained in the activity diagram. Within the activity diagram, you would find we have something called on create. This event is triggered when your app is created. So first time when your app is launched, this event is executed. Then on start, which basically means your activities have started within the app. Then on resume means the operational uh, functions of your app have started. So these technically three are all executed, but in a particular sequence. So Android uses these three events at three different points. Okay. Then your app is in a running state. You can pause it. So for example, you receive a notification or you're watching a YouTube video and you receive a notification or press a multitasking video, you would note your video automatically gets paused because your app has paused and now you're switching your focus to a different app on your drawer. Okay, so that means your app is paused. So if you're watching a video and you switch it, your app back gets paused automatically. Uh, but then at the same time, if you have a music player, your music continues. So that means that your app is not paused. It is continuously on the resume state at the back end activity. So each app has a different uh, uh, structure. Let's go inside Android and try to follow and see when each of these activities are actually being performed. So in our Android Studio, we created a very simple project, blank, absolutely new project called BSIT Morning Activity. Within this project, now we have an absolutely blank and canvas. Again, main activity.java. This is by default displayed to you. Now, as soon as you come here, you will find there is an event called on create. This on create event indicates your on create method. Now, this is included by default, indicating that your app, whenever you start to run this app, is on create and it will pass certain methods that will create your user interface and create your app. Now, our task is to understand how basically other activities are being performed. So, what I do is I create a method called on PUB uh, public void on start. Okay, now uh, once we create this basic method, what this means that your app is, uh, your um, function is created. Okay, um, sorry. Once we create on start, on start method should basically mean that, uh, that your app has started. Now it's giving me an error. Uh, it says overriding method should call super dot on start. Yep. And let this be private as well. Uh, protected. As this method is also protected. Okay. So since uh, this on create is also protected, I will use protected and it gave me an error. One other thing and good thing about your what we call Android is that it gives you error and it tries to solve the error automatically as well. Try to use that feature to resolve your issues. So for example, if I come here, it says on start, it says overriding method should call super dot and there's a red line underneath it. There's a red arrow and red indication here. There's a red indication at the top left corner. All these are indication that this particular line contains an error. Use this well. So if you hover your cursor over this, 
it gives you that this is the error add a super call to fix that particular error so as, as soon as i click on it see this a super dot on start it's auto automatically executed remember on start this method i didn't create it it already is already created an app dot compact activity class we are just overriding it so we are just overriding the inherited method and that inherited method requires that we call the super method as well okay so this basically means that my super method is being called within this super method just let me try to use log dot i and within log dot i let me give something called stat state comma on start semicolon and on create set content method let me just give log dot i uh, i think we will give stat state okay so now what basically i did i want to just get an output uh, on star start start activity okay what log dot i does that it will print the log at our log cat window so if at the bottom you will find a log cat window this log cat window will give you our logs that when we run the app okay it's just like a simple output window when we use uh, system dot dot print ln for our desktop uh, for our android blah, 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 for our java so in java we use system dot dot print ln to get an output on our console similarly this can be considered as a console that prints the output okay so we use log dot i and this is the state because uh, in other words the um, the name of your log okay because there can be many logs it allows us to search which particular log you want to go for it so in this case log i would be more feasible for um, log i and we give it a particular name so it becomes easy that which state i want to search for on create activity is just the string that i'm going to print and then just use a semicolon here similarly i will use protected void and the method called uh, on uh, resume r e s u m e resume okay so since this is the third method from our activity on create on start and on resume so we have on create by default we created a method called in start super on uh, start has been called so that all the default methods that are supposed to be executed on start are automatically overridden and are called here okay and then on resume again it gives me a same error it says overriding method should call super dot on resume add super call i said yes and it solves the problem as well then i just create the log now how log works basically is just like printing an output on your log window so we use log dot i we give it a name so that you can identify which log you are using and then you give a string of whatever you want to get printed on so i want to say active vity on pretty okay so i have these three basic activities being performed here if i run this app and i should not get be and should not be getting any error Oh, okay sorry so i think this was capital l and this also is capital l so once we have this theory created and hopefully all these red indicating marks are removed from here and your main activity has no red marks here your errors are all correct now let me just execute this app okay so hopefully when it gets executed we will try to view our log and see these different states when each state is executed at the same time we will be performing and using on pause on stop and on destroy method as well but i have not gone to this methods yet i'm just trying to see that if this is working and i get these three states right now okay so basically what the idea here is to understand that how and when each of these method get executed so we will perform two three different operations of opening and closing the window and see how things go okay so again be patient with android let it install and hopefully this will win
So now you see many logs being generated here as soon as our Android has started. So these are logs of backend log files that are being generated. Because there are so many different log files, that's why we need uh, this variable tag name, okay, as state. This tag indicates that we can search for this particular log. Okay, hopefully it means, so it, it basically creates a name for this log activity so that we can search from all these different log activities. So now finally our um, app is running and at the same time you would find that uh, my logs have dozens of issues, okay? So one thing we can do is let me just find S-T-A-T-E state log. So as soon as I go inside my search box and type S-T-A-T-E state on, you can see that now I get only my particular logs. So that's the one way. And again, log basically means that there's no output on the actual window, uh, but you get an output on your log window so you can debug the code as you go along. Now, as you can see, the first thing we got was on create got executed, then on start got activity, then on resume. Now, this thing has nothing to do with the sequence that I've wrote it in. Be very, very clear. These are just indicating that how my activities are proceeding. Now, let me just finish this and write uh, what we call uh, protected void and let me just use for example on stop event okay and similarly protected void on destroy and similarly we will have, I think, on start, on resume, on start, on stop, on destroy, okay? And then, as you can see, there's already a red line here. If I hover my cursor over it, add to super call. If I hover my cursor it, add to super call. Then within this, I will just bring it up and, and go and write a log dot i, bracket star, bracket close, semicolon, inverted quotations, the name of the log, comma, inverted quotations, on stop activity, okay? Same thing, let me just copy. And after this event, let me just paste. This T-R-O-Y destroy. So we have created the functions for all these different methods that we use within our Android Studio. So we have a, something called on create, on start, on resume, and on stop, on destroy, on pause is missing. So protected void on P A U S C pause. Okay. And then again, it says that you need to inherit so that it understands that it is actually your system generated method. And then I just paste the log activity and P A U S C pause. Okay. So now we have function for all these activities and we try to understand how these life cycles work, which we basically try to explain. So now we perform various different operations of switching between multiple apps and we see at which point each of these functions get executed. So we knew that once I start an app, my on create, on start and on resume, these three events are executed in a sequential manner. Okay, so these three methods are basically executed in a sequential manner on create, on start, and on resume. So it doesn't matter how these codes have been written, but these methods get executed uh, in terms of your particular sequence. Okay. Now, if I go back inside my app and see this, what I do is I minimize this app from the point. Okay. I've not run this app again. So just let me click on this button, apply changes. So what happened is I closed the app in this case, one of these events should have uh, executed, but I did not what we call apply the changes of the code. So make sure you click on this button. So your changes are applied and your activity is restarted. As soon as your activity is restarted, now you know you that you have a create, start and resume, pause and stop events have been triggered, that your app has been paused. So if I click on my app again, okay, sorry, this is a different app. Zip. Uh, where's my app gone? Here's my drawer. And my, I think app should be.
this one. Ah, okay. So as soon as I trigger this app again, you note that I have a start activity being performed. So if I go back, now resume, then pause, then stop, then destroy. These events are triggered. Okay. So as soon as we close an app, a pause, stop, and a destroy events are executed. So you note that every time you close, you start, you run an app, different activity sequence are being performed. So if I again start it, now you will notice that I have after destroy, again create, start, and resume these three apps. Okay. After this, I go for a multitasking. So as soon as I multitask, now I have a pause and a stop activity being performed. Means my activity has been paused and stopped. So now it, if it is being YouTube, no, it will no longer play. So if I just close it, swipe it, now you see after pause and stop, destroy activity is executed. Okay, so this is what basically life cycle means. That's when you start an app, certain actions are performed. When you minimize it, when you switch between app or when you close it, different events are triggered. And we can use these events to perform various different tasks on our code. So every time we basically work, we have different codes available that we can perform. So I again open the start activity and my activity create start and resume has executed okay i go inside the multitasking on pause on stop has executed i again click on it this time again start and resume has created okay but at this point create activity was not executed because previously it was paused and stop i went into multitasking but i didn't close it and then i again regained the activity so the create activity didn't execute this time only start and resume got executed. Let me show it again. So I go inside the multitask. You will note pause and stop has came. I again just click on it and I want to work with it. No create or got executed, start and resume went in. So this is what basically the typical life cycle of our system gets indicated. So at this point, after stop, it goes back onto on restart and these two methods are executed. Okay, so uh, this is how the life cycle works. Sometimes uh, it might not be useful uh, or it's not might be important depending on what app you're developing and what activities you're needing. But at a larger case, this thing becomes very useful. So for example, if you're working with a bank app or a more security app, you would want to ensure that once your app is stopped, all activities are stopped, all transactions, all its backend processes are stopped at the certain point and the app is destroyed and closed properly. Once you go into the resume mode, what should happen? If you are again going back into resume mode, check how long it was when you logged in previously so that session has expired or not. So you require to re-log in or whatever the event you want to trigger. So if it is on resume, go back onto the app, fetch the latest news or latest messages. Or if you are on the Facebook page, once you close it, you go back into it. Should you continue from there or a fresh pages loads up? You know, so it, all this depends on what you want to do. Same thing happens with Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp. When you switch between apps, they use these events to refresh their pages. That once the user came back, comes back to my app from its resume state or pause state, he should be at the own at the place where he left off. But if he's coming from stop and destroy, then I should start from the top and refresh the page. So we use these events to refresh our pages and uh, refresh our apps at a distant designated point. Be letting or controlling what user sees and what user doesn't see. Do they need to log in again or not need to log in again? Okay. I hope I made myself a little clear. We will explore these methods in more tutorials later on. Okay. So now, um, thank you for watching.